Hi, I'm Kathleen Murphy, and welcome to Murph and E Unfiltered Zero BS Biz Talk. I'm here today with my co-host, Elliot Grossman. How are you, Elliot? Murph, I'm doing great. It nice. has been a while. It has been. Gosh, it's been it's been months. But yeah. I think we made it through the winter. We did make it through, and here we are. Here so we good are, to be right? here. Right back in the spring. <laughs> right on, no doubt, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, today we're going to talk about a subject that I, I teed up actually quite a while ago because I think at the time it was probably nearer to the holidays, so I, I believe that that was probably what was in my mind at the time. Mm -hmm. But the, the title of the show is called, Are You Sharing Enough? And I'm going to read us the, the overview for the show just to kind of kick us off. So there are various types of sharing, sharing material things, experience, and sharing your thoughts, and a variety of other categories which could be explored. With so many options of how you could share, why aren't more people doing this? Are you one of them? So I grew up in a family and uh, was the oldest of three siblings. And so I think anyone that has siblings probably has some experience with sharing. Maybe not, you know, I don't, I don't want to right. uh, uh, right. generalize like that. But, but being the oldest and, and being told on numerous occasions that I had to share, um, it, it sort of gets ingrained in you that this is something that you're supposed to be doing. So um, I fast track to being in business. And uh, I remember the, the first time I encountered an experience where I made perhaps a wrong assumption that just everybody had the same experience that I did and right. that everybody was willing to share. Well, that, that wasn't the case. And it was a pretty steep learning lesson for me, mm -hmm. particularly the first time that I embarked upon thinking that, of course, this person that I'm going to ask for some information, which is a form of sharing, right? was going to say, of course, of course, let's let's go, Kathy. Yeah, I'll be happy to share this information with you. And I realized that at that moment that this person wasn't going to share information with me, mm -hmm. or at least maybe not at that point in time. Perhaps not even because of the way that I had asked for the information. So there are a number of different factors to contribute to why mm -hmm. you may not get some information or have somebody share something with you. Sure. So what, what's been your experience? What was it like for you growing up? Did yeah, well, I was the youngest of six. So six kids in my family, five boys, one girl. Um, being the youngest, I don't know, I was, <laughs> uh, sharing was, you know, whether it was a dinner table or out and about, uh, you know, five guys a little different, right? Right. Running around, uh, right. youngest getting beat up and pushed around. Right. I, I, there was not a lot of sharing, and, I, oh, they were sharing. A, and they were big guys, too, so I was a lot smaller. I couldn't, you know. So, but you learn how to figure things out, yes. and, and then you fast track into your... I think when you start playing, even just Little League, or yes. you, you fast track into team sports, which I know you're involved in, um, it makes a huge difference, right? It and, does. And, and you fast track from team sports and Little League and other things, and you realize how important it is. And I, you know I've talked many, many times about equating coaching basketball or being involved in basketball That's to right. sharing the ball as a team. That's right. And and I, I think it's just a valuable lesson and it really kind of is a good parallel into into the business world and certainly in the sales world. It, it really is. And I feel that for me personally, when I share, it's it, it provides me with pride in, in, in doing that. And, and there's a lot of fa satisfaction in doing something along those lines. This show is a good example of that, right? We're sharing information with, with others. As a matter of fact, uh, congratulations. Today is show number 35. So uh, we, we've shared a lot of information on this show with, with other people in terms of the experience that we've had. So we're, we're, we're um, walking the walk and talking the talk, right? <laughs> which, which is, I think, sure. important to say. Right. Um, and, I, and I love the expression, it's better to um, give than it is to receive. Agreed. Right? And, and, and it's, it's a pretty simple factor, simple life lesson that I think isn't necessarily taught per se in school. Um, this is something that perhaps you learn at home, but to your point earlier, certainly on a sports team or any team of that sort, there is a sense that you need to share with one another. So that's, that's um, a good way for people to sort of professionally um, gain some of that information. Mm -hmm. I have, I have a question for you because this is something that I realized that particularly after that first experience where the person said no to me for 
not sharing information that I was so intent upon um, extracting from them. And for context sake, I thought early on in my career that I wanted to go into real estate development. And this person who was really um, only about a year older than I was, and I was in my maybe mid-20s at this point, had, had already been quite successful. So I figured that he was willing to probably share maybe some of his secrets with me. Sure. And that wasn't the case. And, and so I was um, you know quite surprised by that. But it was at that point in time that I thought afterwards that, well, maybe I need to devise some kind of a system to figure out if I'm going to be successful at asking people to share something with me, whether it's something tangible or information, mm -hmm. um, that I need to figure out a good way to have a process right. to, to not be disappointed if the answer is no, right? Yep. And to, to try to increase my success rate of it being 100% yes or, or close to that, right? Mm -hmm. so, so what I did basically was I realized that um, also before I get into talking about my system, I realized that there are people who, who feel that if they give up information, it's going to reduce their power. They're giving away something. Uh. That's one camp. The other camp and school of thought is that there are people that feel when they give up information, they empower others. Now, I don't know about you, E, but I feel like the best leaders that I've ever worked for, best managers I've ever had in my life, were ones that fell into camp number two. Uh, absolutely, right? So just, it reminds me of when you were in elementary school growing up mm -hmm. and you're taking your little tests and you're writing in your blue books, if you recall, I or you're taking your little multiple <laughs> choice tests, <laughs> right? And you, you'd look over and, and you weren't trying to look for information or cheat. It, you're just looking over at, you know, your friends that might be next to you and people are covering up. Uh -huh. Remember those I kids do. that would Absolutely. cover up? Absolutely, yes. And, and I used to laugh and say, are you kidding me? Like I. I I don't care what you wrote. I, right. If I'm going to fail this test, I'll do it on my own. That's right, exactly. And, and so what happens then, Murph, is it becomes a a situation for, for me, just like you talked about, right? Uh, uh, it's got to be a community event. And when I realized the sharing wasn't sharing, yeah. um, professionally like you, it, it amazed me. Yeah. Because I'm just, what do I care? Right. You know, I want to go from... And I did learn, I've had situations where we talked about. So I'm like, okay, if I'm out and about when I was starting my sales career, if I see a lead that didn't make sense for me in the uh, arena that I was playing in or, or, or you know, the industry that didn't make sense, I'd go back and pass it along to a couple people. Sure. Yeah. And would think in return, the same thing would happen. They would reciprocate. Often it did, but often it, it, it did not. Sure. And that's often, going back to what you just talked about. Absolutely. So my method was essentially what I just shared with you, that I realized that there are two types of people. But one of the ways that I tested this process was I would ask, I would start with something really simple. I would just ask for something that really didn't require a lot of either thought on their part, a lot of energy, and that wasn't going to put them into a difficult position. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they could generally say yes to whatever it was I was asking of them. Now, if they said yes, I then knew which camp that they were in. If they said no, I said, all right, well, we're going to have to work on this person potentially, and right. we'll see where this goes. Yep. But it quickly allowed me to, to have a system that I could depend upon, right, to know, okay, how am I going to get to where I need to based on this person sharing whatever it is that I need. Yeah, you're, you're just way too nice of a person. <laughs> right, because you are. You're a really nice person. I'm not that nice. Well, so for me, I, I'll give you one chance. I'll give you another chance, but you're not going to reciprocate. You know, it's not going to happen Next, again. Like you're, you're dead. Move to on. Me. We're good. Okay. I'll just move on. There's a million other people. Okay. I'd like to help, uh -huh. and in return, would be willing to help me. Sure. Well, you know, I think that um, I've got some tips for us. Bring it to, on. Um, share with those if, if my system or your system isn't going to work for others. I've got uh, a few tips I can share. So the first one is, without being asked, offer to share something you value with a person that wouldn't you wouldn't expect them to um, give back to you. It could be a physical item, as we talked about earlier, or maybe something tangible that would be perceived as being valuable to them and maybe mm -hmm. to you and to have them share it with you. The second one would be, if you're not accustomed to sharing, let's just fast track and make an assumption that not everybody falls into this school of, okay, it's, it's fine to share. 
they should really begin slowly. And it may feel awkward to them at first doing this sharing thing, um, but over time it is gonna become a lot easier just with anything else might be. Mm -hmm. And keep working on it. Yep. The third one would be to set a goal for yourself and perhaps to potentially share one thing a week. And, and maybe uh, graduate onto sharing every day something, a little something. Mm -hmm. It could be just being doing something nice for somebody. And the more that you do that, it's certainly going to be a lot easier to get to a point where you're going to um, feel really good about doing that. So what about you? Do you have some suggestions in terms of how somebody might go about making it easier for them to share? Yeah. So. So just quickly, yesterday I worked with a rep. He's a new rep, and I hadn't worked with him before. We had a long ride up to Maine, way up. And I said, hey, we had spoken to a customer a few weeks back. Had you followed up? And he said no, mm -hmm. which I didn't like, but that's okay. Sure. Right. There's I said, probably well, give a me reason. a favor. Give him a call, mm -hmm. and let's talk about it. So he gave him a call, and he was, it was very soft-spoken. It, was, uh, it wasn't a very good cold call. Uh, not a cold call, but a warm call because sure. we'd already met with the guy, right. in my opinion. Right, right. So I said, let's do this. Let's role play a little uh, bit. So we heard your call. Yes. Now let's listen to mine. Yes. And I called the guy, similar to what you had talked about, you know, episode one about filming yourself and doing right. your thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, when you're looking to set up a career. And we did it. And, and it was quite different. The results were different. Everything was different. I don't have all the answers, but it helped him. And he said, one thing, it was funny that we're doing this today. Thanks for sharing that with me. It made oh, a difference. Great. I'm a soft-spoken guy. Oh, uh, okay. But I can step out of my comfort zone, get okay. into a, a different zone, step okay. out of the comfort zone, uh, which was probably episode 20 we talked sure. about. But, you know, and, and it gave it to him, and it made me good for sharing that information. He appreciated it as well. Absolutely. And, and I love how they had some awareness of themselves in terms of them being a little bit more reserved. Yep. I think in those cases also, and I don't know if you share this with, with this person or maybe perhaps with other people, but especially with people that are perhaps a little bit more reserved, maybe they would classify themselves as being shy, mm -hmm. that when they're in situations where they have to do something that's a little uncomfortable for themselves, that they basically will have to you know, sort of hearken almost acting as if there's somebody else. Right. And when you do that, and when you um, have this other sort of persona that you can step into in those instances, mm -hmm. right, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and it can point. allow you to practice, yeah. right, in those situations. I actually said to him, get in front of your mirror mm -hmm. and be a different person. Yeah. You're a great guy. Right. You're an intelligent guy. I want to share this information, mm -hmm. but I want you to continue to practice. And, and I think he will. Good. I think it, it won't fall on deaf ears. And, but anyway, we, and, I don't want to get you well, off track. No, 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 that's fine. And speaking of mirrors, it's funny because oftentimes, and I've said this to you before, I, I will say to people, a lot of times my job is about giving people awareness of, of who they are and what their perception is and, and showing them a mirror for the first time in terms of what they look like. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people are really surprised. So that was great advice that you gave to that person so well, that they could practice. some intelligent person that I know kind of passed that on to me, <laughs> right? So good that's, job, Murph. That's uh, great. So I don't want to get you off track. I no, want to continue. No. I know you have so more tips that you want I, to give us. I, I do have some more tips. So the next one would be the concept of sharing can take practice, as, as we talked about a little bit before. And uh, you're going to be a lot happier when you do this also. There's, there's a great uh, feeling of an endorphin rush when you're doing something nice for somebody. So keep in mind that there's a definite benefit to doing this beyond just um, kind of being nice, Correct. if you will. And many, many of us, let's face it, have way too much stuff. You look around, at least in my house, I look around and I think, oh my gosh, I feel like I live in a Zen house, but in reality, I don't. I see a lot of stuff. So consider giving maybe some of this stuff away mm -hmm. to somebody else, perhaps even unsolicited, perhaps just you know dropping it off at somebody's house, dropping it off on their desk, maybe donating it someplace. Sure. Right? It could mm -hmm. be any number Absolutely. of those different things. Um, and then we've all encountered a teacher, perhaps a coach, somebody in our life that was uh, one of our favorite people. And, and think about potentially mimicking the way that they go about sharing 
the, whatever style that they have. Maybe that could be a style that you could adopt that, that could make you more comfortable. Right. So you can look around. There are so many different styles that, that, that can be sort of like fashion, right? Mm -hmm. Just there's a style for everybody. And it can change also as, as you evolve. So has there been somebody in your life that's positively impacted you in terms of something that they shared with you? whether it be professionally or when you're growing up? Yeah, absolutely, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, well, we're here talking about business, so I'll stick to the business side okay. because there's probably too much on the personal side to discuss. There are many people help me. I mean, I'm lucky to be here. But when we talk on the business side, there, there was many folks, and, and I think when you first get into sales, mm -hmm. you're very green, you're very raw, you make a million mistakes. But part of, from that mistake is you should continue to learn from each mistake. Sure. And long ago, when I was selling, I went in and, and thought I was going to close a deal that day with a customer that I, a potential customer I'm working on. And he told me no. He and his wife actually oh. told me no. And, and I was like dumbfounded. I'm like, right. wait, I thought I had this deal. Right. I was counting it. I was right. ready to shut down for the day, go to the golf course, have a few beers. And I said, do you mind if I ask why? And they listed out the five things. Five things. Wow. And here I am thinking it was a done deal. Right, right. So uh, rule number one, it's never a done deal. But rule number two, they shared with me, and I, I've never forgotten those reasons. And because of those reasons, I became a much better person. Now they shared it with me. They weren't trying to hurt my feelings. Sure. But it, it was beneficial. And I try to do the same now, just like I did yesterday. Exactly. I love that story. So there was a time for me personally when I wanted to share, and I'll never forget this. It, it haunts me to this day. Okay. But this is advice that I can pass along to others in terms of not being able to share in this situation. Okay. So I was in the process of hiring somebody where we got to the negotiation phase, and this person did not negotiate their salary or their benefits structure with me. So... I could not say to them, hey, you know, you're, you're basically leaving money on the table. I really, really wanted to, <laughs> right. right? So whenever I'm talking to people today, I always tell them, whenever you get that offer, make sure that you negotiate because that, that, that costs that person a, a fair amount of money. Sure. And, and was that money ever going to be something that they could recoup in the future? Maybe, uh, maybe not. Was that because they were so excited to have the offer they were just going to take it as opposed to, okay, we got an offer, you have an offer, but it's okay to go back. Were they uncomfortable going back? Or, I, or? I think so. I think that they were really excited about the position and they were nervous. And about, you wanted to share. but you, I did. Yeah. I wanted to share with them. I'm like, please, please negotiate. <laughs> Let me be I your have agent. more money. Right, right exactly. Money. It's not going to you know, benefit me, but it's going to benefit you. And so I, I, I tell people that all the time. Did that, you look differently at them as an, as an employee that was going to you know, work for you? I, I think I, no, I, you know, because I, I felt like they really... They had um, been turned down oh, okay. um, on some other other Got positions. It. See, I felt You're a nice person. That, well, I felt that I was fortunate to bring this person on board. Right on. And I wanted to compensate them properly. Good. But I, I anticipated that they would negotiate, so right. I couldn't start at the top, right? No, so of I course just not. As assumed, which is a, a <laughs> well, they know, were happy to have an offer if they got turned they, down. They and, were, yeah, and, so. and they were an amazing employee. So that was something that that I certainly learned. Um, uh, what about you? Give me give me a, a, an idea as somebody that's impacted you positively or where you shared or didn't share, you got turned down or maybe you didn't. So most recently, and, and I'm going to share with you not on camera here today, but um, about a sports coach at the Division One level who gave me an opportunity to work with their team this, this season. Mm -hmm. And it was an incredible opportunity where they shared their time, they shared exposure to their team, the other coaches, any advice that I wanted, I got to practice as like a test kitchen, I would tell them. Okay. My practice of what I do as a, as a performance and motivation mm -hmm. uh, team dynamics coach on their team for, for the season. And it was the most exciting experience, exhilarating experience every single time. And when they were traveling, because I wasn't always traveling with sure. them, I got to watch them on ESPN, so mm -hmm. that was really cool. And so 
That to me was an experience that's going to change the trajectory and, and, and put me in line to be doing uh, more work with other um, Division One and professional teams going forward, doing the professional work. Were they sharing did. back in return? Like, was it an open book situation? It was. Oh, that's great. It, it really was. So I, I, it was definitely a quid pro quo situation. Right. So I, I said that, like, look, I, I'm an open book here. You can ask me whatever you want. I'm here to improve your team any way that I can see possible based on my knowledge and experience. So, LA, that, that was just an absolute just dream project yeah, I bet that, it was. that I just completed. Yeah. So that person really gave me and cool. shared something That's that great. I didn't expect. Yeah. But they had told me probably about six months ago, just lightly in conversation uh, based on another project that I was doing that they happened to be involved with, if, if you are, are looking for somebody, I, I'm that person that's willing to take a chance, and I always am that person that says yes and will be the first one about to experiment. That? I know. Cool? Isn't that great? I know. So I'm hoping other people. That doesn't happen very often, and especially in that world that you were playing in, Division One, and people don't want to share, and everything is covert operation. That's right. Uh, that's really cool. It, it, it is really cool. Yeah. But I'm hoping that it's a nod to give other people permission to, to potentially right. do that for somebody yeah, else. I hope so. Look at the impact that it not only had on me, but it had on the team. Yeah, so I'm I sure saw this team really come together um, in an incredible way with the culmination of their final game last Friday, mm -hmm. where they, they, they beat the other team by almost a margin of, of close to like 10 points. Mm -hmm. So a significant margin. Cool. And, and it wasn't just the significance of the win, it was how they played together on the field right. and how they truly supported one another. And I, and I um, am about to send them a note saying, if you had played and if you continue to play that way mm -hmm. next season, Game changer yeah, for cool. this team. That's great. Absolutely. Like I get, I get the shivers. Yeah, that's great. It's good really stuff. Exciting. It that's is really, really good cool. stuff. So, what about you? Has has there has there been a time when either you were disappointed by somebody not other than you know the the, the time that you that that one deal that you lost? Right. Um, were you able to get that back by any chance? No, I didn't. By, no, you, okay. No, but I was young. If I had known then what you I know now, it might have been it would probably be different. Right. I guess. It, it, exactly. I would have approached it differently. You, you know. So that brings to the point. Many times, if you you figure out why. Somebody shares information with you um, in a sales meeting, maybe your manager, maybe your peers, if you're not a manager. Right. You know, whatever it may be, they share information. Hey, try this, do this, do this. I, I have encountered maybe one or two teams that I've been on, not athletic teams, but one or two teams in the sales world that people weren't willing to help. Right. Other right. than that, every right. team I've been on, every uh, person that's been on those teams, are all willing to share because at one point or another, everybody wants to win. Right. And I think that's the common goal. It is. And it, it, it's it a be. different time for a different how you determine winning and what's successful. But quite honestly, when you're looking to in sales side of it, you know, results, it's a results oriented business. Right, exactly. To be able to be part of a team like that, that uh, be part of every team that shares, you know, any advice I could ever give, whether it's a manager or as a salesperson, just share, work together, be the best part. Because like you talked about before, I get, you will get much more out of it yes. than you will ever get back in return. That's just by giving that information, sharing a lead, sharing some insight. Maybe you have a friend of a friend who knows that person to make some inroads. There's nothing better. There is nothing better. And I'll, I'll leave us with this one last story. So there was a, a time back about seven months ago when I received an email out of the blue. This, this email came probably close to 20 plus years after I had given somebody an opportunity to come onto my team. And he thanked me in the email and told me what a difference that it made because of the chance that I gave him and where he is professionally today and how if it wasn't for me giving him a chance back 20 plus years ago that he wouldn't be in the situation that he is. So you never sometimes, right. that doesn't always happen. No. You don't always get that full circle effect, yep. uh, an enclosure on a situation, but when you do, wow, it's yeah. pretty pretty Yeah, amazing. no doubt. Yeah, so great show today, Elliot. Yeah, it was good. That was fun, Mark. Appreciate yeah, uh, good topic. being here with me. Thank you. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. 
please join us another time to see more Murph and Ian filtered zero BS biz talk shows in the future. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye now.